Hello once again, innovative educators, and welcome back to our series, Tech Tools for a Fun and Engaging Classroom. Today, we're going to look at a brand new tool called Make Beliefs Comics. This tool promises to be rather exciting, so sit tight as we travel on this journey to figure out how to use this tool in our classes. All right, so the first thing you're going, you're going to want to do is to go to your Google homepage and type in make All right, so once you come here, you click on that first link and it will take you to this page. Now, as soon as you're seeing um, the page here, you can see how colorful it is. It's really a very exciting tool and one that I promise that your students will enjoy interacting with this tool. So in order for you to explain to your students how to use this, um, you need to also familiarize yourself with it as well, all right? So once you get to this page, you're going to want to click here where it says login or create your own account. Now, when this page comes up here, you're going to want to put in your email. Um, and I just log in with Google here. All right. So you select the account that you want to use. And now you're basically logged into Make Beliefs Comics. So now that, you, now that you're here, you're going to want to start to create your own comics. You can scroll down, look at what you have here, um, just to familiarize yourself with a few of these things. Now, because I already signed up with Make Believe Comics um, and I was playing around with it to see, you know, just exactly how to create the comics. So this was a demo comic I made just to show you here just how easy it is to make a comic, all right? So basically you start here, you put in the name of your comic here, you put in your name, you're the, per the author, the person who's making the comic. Here is where you select the number of panels that you want to use and you have up to 18 panels that you can use here. Now, if you start your comic with say four panels, and um, in the middle of it, you realize that you're going to need more. You simply need to um, click this plus sign here and um, it, will give you, it will give you an additional comic. So you can click that for as many times as you want and you can get um, additional panels there if you find that you need more, all right? So how do you go about creating the comic? So now you have the panels up here. Let me add another one here just to show you exactly what the, making the comic would look like. So you have your panels here, but you want to put characters in and you want to put background and you want to put in um, thought bubbles or speech bubbles, all right? So when you've decided on, you know, what you want to put on your panel, you click the panel, you scroll down here, you click here to choose, you know, your character, what kind of character do you need in your comic, all right? And you have, you know, a variety of characters here. You can scroll across to select the one that you want. So let's say we're doing let's say we're doing a superhero um comic. All right. Once you click the character that you want, you get options. So what um what expression do you want your character to have? All right. So let's begin with this. So you go back, you click the back, and you can now come here, you go back again, and you can select your background. So you scroll across, you go to background. What kind of background do we need for our superhero? You scroll across, you look for a background that probably fits into, you know, the comic that you want to create. See which background we're going to use for this comic. All right, let's select that one. It might not fit in, but we just want to 
I just want to show you exactly how you um, go about selecting your characters and your background. So of course, now you want your character to say something, all right? So you go back, scroll across, and you look for the balloons and prompts. Now, do you want a character? What size do you want? So they have a number of different sizes here. These are speech bubbles, and then they also have the thought bubbles down here. So if you want your character to be thinking, all right? You also have, um, these are the signs here. So if you want to say the end or suddenly the next day, you know, these things show you that the story is continuing and so on, or the story has ended. Or if you want to select one where you type your own, so you could select one of these and put in what you want to say instead of taking one of these that um, have um, already been done here. So we want our character to say something. So let's select a speech bubble. Once you select the speech bubble, you click on it to type what you want to say. So let's say our superhero is saying, um, all right. Then you move the speech button. You can move it to where you want it to be. So if you want it to be right on top here, you can put it there, you can put it, so you can move it around the page to where you want it to be, all right? So you have your first panel. So you go to your next panel and you're going to go and use the same um, steps. So you go back and you can do this in any order that you want. So if you want to put in your background first, you can also do that. You don't have to do it in any particular order. So you want to, let's, if we want to keep the same background, let's keep the same background, right? And if we want to go back, you can always go back and choose the same character and then we can give him a different expression for the second panel. So let's do that. Let's go back and look for our super dog. And here he is. What expression should super dog have in the second panel? Maybe something like this. All right, and then we go back, go back again, select um, the bubble and select anyone that we want. So let's say he's talking to this man in the doorway here. So he could say, and of course I'm just making this up as I go along. Um, one of the things that you could say to your students before they come onto the page to create their, their comic, they would probably have an idea of what exactly it is that they're going to be creating. So perhaps they would be creating a comic based on a prompt that you have given them. So they would have an idea, probably have it, um, you know, jot it down on paper so they know exactly what they are doing. So we're just creating this, um, this one randomly just to show you how easy it is to create a, a comic on make-believe comics. And this is something that your students will definitely enjoy. So let's go to our last panel here. And of course we do the same thing. And remember you can do this in any order. So you can do background first or you can do character first. Anyone is great. All right, so let's put him in that um, position there. We go back and we select our background. And of course, you know, depending on depending on the story that you are telling, you could probably have different backgrounds. So let's say he's flying away there. We go back and we select our balloon. All right, so perhaps um, Superdog realizes that the man is no threat. So he could probably say, something like that. You have to probably take him down a little bit here so we can get this up there. All right. And of course you could fix this. You can fix it. Um, you can always edit, all right.
And um, so when you're ready to, so say you we're finished, right? When you've added all your panels, you've added all your backgrounds, all your characters, all the speech bubble, everything that you want to add and you want to save. By the way, before I go on, let me just show you. There are a number of things that you could add in your panels. So you can add objects if you wanted more objects in your background, right? There you have the option of adding objects. So just in case you wanted to start with a blank panel and you just add things instead of creating one of their backgrounds that was done already. So maybe you want to create a classroom. So you have, you know, these here, you could create your own classroom as a background using the, the objects there. You can also add words, right? So you have um, these exciting words here that you could add to your comic if you want to add any of those. You can also add So this is something that you could play around with. So you can choose your own characters here um, and create your own car, um, conversations here. So there are a number of different things that you could do colleagues with your, with your comic. You can play around with it, add what you want to add. Um, there are greeting cards. Then of course you have the COVID-19 comics diary, different things, all right? So you can play around with these toggle and choose what you want to, to look at. And of course, you can also explain all of this to your students and get them to make their own comics. So when you're finished with your comics, what do you do with them? How do you save your comics? Or how do you send these to your students? That's a very important step. Or if your students are going to be making comics, how do they send them to you for you to grade or for you to review? So when you're finished, you click Update, right? Make sure the comic is saved. And each time you add something to it, you update again. So if I go back and I say, okay, I don't want this um, character here. Um, if you want to delete this and um, select something else, you simply click the delete here and click the character and it disappears, all right? So if you want to do something like that, if you want to do that, you're able to do that. And then of course you would update to always save your new changes, all right? So say we're finished with our comic now and we want to send this to the students if you're making it as a teacher or the students are making it and they need to send it to you. How do they do that, all right? So you come here, notice where it says share, right? So you can go directly to email and email this to somebody. So the student can do this and email it to you. So they would um, scroll down here and they would put in their name, the name of the person making the comic. They would put in their email here who are they sending the email to? They would put in the name of the person here and the email down here, and then they would click email comics. And that comes straight to your inbox, all right? Now you can also, you, have, you also have the option of printing your comic. So if it's a case where the student wants to print it and then hand it in if you're, you know, if you're having face-to-face -face class, you also have the option of sharing it on Facebook. And this one, which is the one that I really like, you can save the comic directly to your computer, all right? So if I do this, this the comic is downloaded straight to my computer and I have it here. So I can do anything that I want to do with the comic here because it's already, it's on my device now. So you can toggle all of these and um, explain to your students, you know, whichever one, because if the student downloads it, they can now upload it to Google Classroom or to, you know, to their drive or whatever it is that you're asking them to do. Or they can just simply email the comic to you. And this is what the comic looks like. So of course this, you know, this because I already started one when I was playing around with it and then I added these three panels. So of course this is not, you know, a, a comic that we would send out to anybody, just, but just to show you what the comic looks like. All right, colleagues, I really do hope you learned something new today. And I hope you will definitely try out this new tool and definitely share it with your students and enjoy. See you next time.